lot of people are asking this question. Is it worth buying Primal Shards? There's this post here, and there's this one. Primal Shards, is it worth it? So we're going to go ahead and, you know, dive into what people on Reddit are saying. I'll give you some insight onto what people in my Discord or my clan or what I've seen in game chat are saying. And I'll give you my own little two cents about it as well. Is it worth buying Primal Shards? Hi all, I'm a $12 per month spender, usually gems is my go-to place, but noticed we can buy two Primal Shards with $12. Is it worth getting this offer, two Primal Shards for 12 bucks, is it worth getting this offer so that I hit a mythical sooner? I'm seven months into the game now, pulled like five Primals so far, appreciate your inputs. This guy says, new player, I just spent, I just spent a bunch of energy to get a Primal Shard with high hopes. I got a mythical Gnarl Horn for my troubles. Not a bad rare champion, but not the champion that you're looking for, especially if you worked hard for a mythical champion. Should I not go out of my way for them? So, um, the the answer is if you're if you're free to play and you see a tournament and it's got like primal shards or primal quartz, I think for the most part, personally, and I'm not speaking for everybody. And I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just explaining to you what, what I would do. Yes, I would go out of my way for them unless there is a looming event coming. So for example, what do I mean? There is a Thor fusion coming. There, There's things coming up in this Asgard event that for me personally, I'm going to save a bunch of my resources for, right? So I saw that they, they have primal quartz and, and um, prism shards available in some of the dungeons. I purposely did not go out of my way for those because of the Thor fusion that's coming up. I, pers I purposely did not dump a bunch of energy into like the Sand Devil for that Prism Shard because I've been hearing talks about a possible 2 or 3x pinpoint dungeon drop event coming up for the Odin um, freaking event thingy dungeon. So with that in mind, you as a free-to-play player, I'm not telling you what to do again, but I am strongly encouraging you to you know really weigh out your options are you going to go for the thor fusion right if you are then i would probably hold off and just bide your time wait the primal shards the primal courts there's always going to be events there's always going to be tournaments in the future ways to get them whereas you know this limited time event is once if ever once i, I don't know what once means limited time means because they said ninja was limited time and they gave it out again but you know i'm not i don't really I'm not complaining about that but all this to say it depends right because every account is different so yes it is worth going for because there is the off chance that you do pull a mythical champion but then the next question is you know is it going to be a good champion or is it going to be a bad champion? Because I've been seeing a lot of people talking about, oh, I summoned a giant cock. And, um, you know, my one mythical mercy is now gone. You know, un unless you're a whale, unless you're a kraken and you belong to IPR, or you're in GNL, or, or something where, like, buying buying things in raid is, like, a normal thing for you, or, you know, you just, you just got disposable income like that, then sure. You, you know what I mean? I saw a post the other day, it was like, you know... If uh, if I won the lottery, I wouldn't tell anybody, but there'd be signs. And it was somebody with a, showing a screenshot of somebody in arena with a bunch of plus four mythical, fully ascended, um, fully blessed champions. And I was like, there'd be signs. Yeah, that, that was pretty funny. Because it's true. Me, I have the heart of a Kraken. Do I have the wallet of a Kraken? No. So Kraken me is saying, yeah, primal shards are worth it because I, I want mythical champions. But for most of the player base, I don't think that primal shards are going to be... I mean, I, I, I'd be hard-pressed to... I'm not even going to get into that discussion. Because it, it, it just depends on what you mean by worth it, right? That's subjective. It's up to prerogative. Because we can go back and forth on this. And we've talked about this ad nauseum on this channel. On a bunch of different videos. Where it's like, worth it depends on who you are. Right, Because what's worth it to me may not be worth it to you. What's worth it to somebody in IPR may not be worth it to, you know, one of one of us, right? So it really just kind of depends. Again, to answer this question directly, yes, most of the time you're going to want to go for the events that have, or the tournaments that have Prism Quartz or Prism Shards or, or Primal Shards and whatever it's called. There's so many different currencies in here. 
um, for the most part. You're likely, you're more than likely not going to summon a mythical champion, but again, crazier things have happened. You might be the one person that pulls that one mythical uh, shard and or uh, primal shard and gets a mythical champion. You know what I mean? So um, it just kind of depends. Now, is it worth buying? Should you buy, should you spend $12 for two primal shards? Again, it depends. It depends on you. It depends on your account, right? Because technically, yes, if you if you spend $12 every month and you buy two primal shards every month, well, yeah, you're going to hit mythical sooner, right? That's that's his question, right? He's getting this offer. He wants to hit a mythical sooner. If that's your goal, if that's what's worth it to you, if that's what matters to you, then yes. If you can afford 12 bucks a month, then yes. Who am I to tell you you know how to spend the money that you work for or what your financial situation is would i spend 12 months on two primal shards every month no that's but that's just me i i do my best to not spend any money that i don't necessarily need to but again that's my situation that's my account i'm at a point where i i really can't really i, I just can't justify spending money in raid anymore i've spent thousands in raid and i'm at the point where i'm just like do i really need this is adding another one or two billion damage to my hydro clash points really going to matter to me if i start one keying hydra nightmare if i start taking down the, the nightmare hydra by myself yeah it's cool but for me personally that's not going to mean much for me at the end of the day it's cool don't get me wrong if i could do it i would do it like don't don't get it twisted i would if i could but i don't have the money like that and i'm not going to spend the money like that but that's just me someone might be making six figures taking in a lot of money home and of course they can afford it and they should right because if you work hard and you earn that kind of money you should reward yourself right because rewarding yourself in a game isn't much different than me rewarding myself freaking you know buying food at a restaurant you know what i mean i could cook at home i could just eat at home i don't need to have a fifth meal today but shoot if i want a shawarma you know i say i'm gonna treat myself and then I end up spending like 50 bucks. You know what I mean? So is that is that really any different? You know what I mean? Is it really any different than going to the movie theaters and spending money at the movie theaters? You, you know what I mean? So it, it's, it just kind of depends, right? Now the other counter argument to that, and we can go back and forth on all of these, but you know, all day and all night. The, the counter ar argument to me spending at the restaurant or spending at a movie theater is I'm with my, I'm with my wife. I'm spending money with my wife, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm spending time with my wife. That to me is worth it. So let's go ahead and dive into a few of these Reddit comments. You guys already know how it is. I said <laughs> I said I was going to read these comments first, but uh, you know, yeah, I kind of just go with the flow here. At your stage of the game, I would never buy any kind of shards, but the $10 monthly gem pack or save for some good forge pass. Best bang for your butt. Buck. True. Nothing more to say about that. I've said this before. Yes. By the way, I have started thinking about, I did a community post, if you want, go and vote on that, where I was like, if I um, reach a certain subscriber milestone, because I'm, I'm trying to make a push towards T3 for raids so I can start doing other content in the test server and to engage with the community a lot more, I was thinking about a win-win situation, right? So I was thinking, okay, I could, uh, you know, if we reach, I don't know, 3000 subs on this channel, if the community gets me to like 3,000 subs, then I'll buy a random sub, uh, a forge pass, a giveaway. So let me know what you think about that. I'm more than willing to go ahead and, and do that to give to the community. I think the forge pass is a great investment for someone's account. And, um, you know, I, I don't think it's a, it's a bad thing. So let me know what you think about that. To counterpoint some YouTube videos, and lucky fellas here, since introduction, I've collected and bought exactly 130. He's bought 137 primal shards opened all in various 2x primals with a whopping result of zero mythicals one lego very 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 deep in mercy the infamous <laughs> rathmatab dear god that sucks so you guys might see youtube videos of everybody pulling mythical champions but he's got a point i know a lot of people who've bought mythical shards primal shards and got nothing i know i know somebody i've seen i've done videos 
on people who spent like $300 in prism shards chasing a champion and not getting them. Why MMV, but math is math. Statistically speaking, there is always one who gets eight mythicals and another who gets zero out of 150 primals. Only dump money on it if you can accept being the latter one. Exactly. If you can accept it, go for it. I would never spend money on shards since they're generally speaking the worst investment unless you have big pockets. True, I guess. As free to play, you can stack shards for two, two X primals and pull then. If you're lucky, you could pull two mythicals within 20 shards like me, but at the end of the day, it's all RNG. Yeah. When you get to the end game, you start doing clan boss. Shards are pretty accessible. Books and shards become things that you don't really need to buy, right? I haven't bought shards or books in a really long time, but that's because I have a stable income of that spe those specific resources from clan boss, which is why everybody always tells you like, hey, you should get a, you know, the first things you should work on when you start a new account are getting your six, six star campaign farmer and then working on trying to get UNM clan boss one key and NM clan boss one key, right? Because of those things. This guy says, no, invest in the monthly gem pack and forge passes. The, the shards will come from progression on your account and progressing your account will eventually lead to Makage, who is one of the best mythicals in the game. True. 100%. If you really want to buy gem pass and forge passes, that's it. And I've said this before, right? Gem pass, forge pass, monthly gem pack. Or yeah, um, the men the monthly pack. The one that has like, a, if, like, if you really want shards and gems and energy, the monthly pass or not the monthly pass. I keep calling it the monthly pass, the monthly pack. It's like 30 bucks on the, on the low, low, lower tier of spending. Then it bumps up to like 49, I think. If your budget is $12 a month, I recommend the gem pack and the occasional forge pass. I've spent quite a bit on primal shards during the last two X events. And there are times where you can go hundreds of dollars with nothing good to show. And if you want good passive primal shard income, I focus on account progression into things like Hydra Clash, Live Arena, new clan siege modes, which all give primals as primal shards as, as a reward. That's true. I mean, Live Arena kind of sucks, but there's a way to deal with Live Arena. This past week, I had 27 shards saved up from various free activities and completing events with primal rewards. Progressing into the things that reward primals is going to be way better for you in the long run. Thanks, good and balanced view. The only other side, like the devil tapping on my shoulder telling, telling me something else is this, right? You could spend hours, cumulative hours. You could spend a long time trying to build teams and then compete in Hydra Clash and Live Arena and Siege. Not really Siege, because it's what, you do like two or three battles and that's it, you put your teams in. It doesn't really take that long. But competing in Live Arena, you gotta win, right? To get the chest. That takes a while. Building those champions takes a while. Same thing for Hydra Clash. And then you have to be in a clan that wins, right? If you're in a clan that doesn't really win, well, you're kind of missing out on that. So the, the counter argument is this, right? If, if you think of time as a resource, one way that I'm thinking about it, right, is would I rather spend $12 in one month or 12 hours in one month trying to achieve the same thing? Now, it's not a one for one case, but the general idea is there, right? You hear, you hear it all the time. Time is money. Right? Is it worth me spending 12 hours 12 hours is it even worth spending me spending one hour to do live arena in in chasing um a primal shard let's just say let's just say right let's say i'm doing live arena which i hate i don't like live arena i think it's one of the worst modes out there it's unbalanced counter argument is get good counter argument to that is i don't have a plus four champ i don't have plus four champions and, and high star blessings with polymorph and you know what i mean like arguments can go back and forth right there's skill issues involved. But me personally, I'd rather just drop $12, right? Because that's not even one hour of, of a work day for me, of, a, of a, you know, my, my job. You, you know what I mean? You guys hear what I'm trying to say. And I hope I'm articulating it well enough. But the point that I'm trying to explain is, um, you know, it, it, it just, again, depends on what you want, right? 
And Live Arena isn't something you can access all the time, so you'd have to be waiting, and then you'd have to win some fights. And then it's like you can only do so many fights in one day, unless you spend gems, which is another resource. So, you know, you, you really have to kind of consider that. Two rares for $12 sounds like a good deal. <laughs> That's true, too. But I just get the Forge Pass, XP, Silver Boost, 200 pieces of Ignore Defense Variable, Mythical Charms. Yeah, it's a good perspective. Let's go over here. As a new player, you should focus on building Demon Lord team, reaching Alt Knight. Yeah, so he said that Primal... Sh uh, that's what I said already. You get most of the Sacred Shards and books. Primal Shards have a 0.5 to 1% chance of pulling a Mythic. It's an investment with low return. Also, Mythical Champion books... Uh, champions are expensive to book. You should not focus on chasing Primals in events and tournaments unless you, unless you progress more, even if you're a spender. For now, champion training masteries and farming gear for your uh, Demon Lord team. And this is true, right? Part of the reason why, like, I don't want to pull shards right now is because I don't even have the gear and I don't have the books to max out a champion and make them really good. They would just be okay. And I don't want okay. I want really good. We should all want really good. I know a lot of people who just pull shards and they have a bunch, a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of champions. But they don't have the know-how. How to build them, how to utilize them, how to synergize them. Or they don't have the books to max them out, or the gems, or the energy to max out their masteries, or ascension. Those things are missing. So you need to find the right balance. 